Finance Finance Committee Select Board meeting uh, to um, review some of the budgets for this evening. In this evening, we will have South County Senior Center, Franklin County Technical School, the Highway Department, Tritown Beach, the Planning Board, and the Fire Department. Uh, we will be discussing those budgets with uh, those departments uh, moving forward here. And then um, start things off. <coughs> Let's take a look at the uh, minutes from the last meeting. Do I have make a motion to accept the minutes of the last meeting? All, right. All those in favor? Uh, um, where's Brenda? Is she here? She no. is not on yet. Okay. Either is worse. Um, <laughs> Then in that case, we're gonna if she's on, do we have to take a roll call? If yeah, she, if yeah, she, she in on Zoom, right? If she, she she's on Zoom, yeah, right? Okay. All right. Let Let's give her a, a millisecond here to uh, uh to get in. Okay, so we will take that roll call now, and then when Brenda comes in, we will um, we will ask her. Well, we can. Can't do that. As far as we can do this, we can just take the vote now. Yeah, before we get take the vote now. Okay, let's take the vote now. Dan, on the minutes, yay or nay? Aye. Jim. Aye. Paul. Aye. Aye as well. Tom? Aye. Jim? Aye. Okay. And actually, for underneath what the Brenda isn't on for, you can take without one call. Well, only if someone that's someone. Yes. Let's, uh, let's throw that into the mix. I'm wondering if you need to go. Okay. So, first up this evening to uh, for us to uh, discuss and go through would be the. Uh, South County Senior Center. Um, is an inter office memorandum that everyone has received. Um, I think we've had a chance to kind of just um, peruse it a little bit and pick out some numbers and um, look at um, the status of the Senior Center and what we, we being Waitley, um, are responsible for. Um, but let's hear it from the director. Um, Jennifer Rundler. Who is here? Hey. Okay, Jennifer, Jennifer, before you start, let's let us let us take a roll call around and let's so that we know who is here for everyone at home and as well as ourselves. Go ahead. Julie Wagoner, Wayne Select Board. Dan Kennedy Finance. Jim Kirkendall, Finance. Paul Newman, Finance. Paul Antea, Finance. Tom Maher, Finance. Judy Ross, Finance. Fred Barron, Select Board. Trisha McCasey, Interim to co Town Co-Administrator. And we now have Brenda on the line and <clears throat> on the Zoom. Brenda, can you introduce yourself? Hi, Brenda Doherty, Finance Committee. Alrighty, so the floor is yours. Sorry, just, just texting with Joyce. Um, so I just want to make sure I sent a revised um, budget over. I want to make sure that the budget that you're looking at has the full amount of $180,597. Let's make sure that we're all on the same page here. Um, um, so that would be under tab tab four, I think, right? And that would be um, Sorry. South County EMS. There's, a, there's an assessment page. We're not EMS, we're senior center. 
Senior Center. I'm, I'm sorry. Senior Center. I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll get senior center. Two. Section two. Section two? Yeah. All right. Okay. We'll go through the rest. Yep. Here we go. God bless you. Um, CRS five. I just wanted to make sure because the administrative costs overhead um, increased. I had submitted over a draft a proposal in uh, January, so I wanted to make sure you have the most up to date one. And that draft <laughs> or the administrative overhead should be at $15,900 on your revised copy. So I just want to make sure we're working with the same numbers. Um, Hold on a second. Apparently, you're you're speaking to a line item budget, yeah. and I don't uh, see a line we don't have that. And we don't have that. I okay. Um, is there a way to make copies for everyone? I would have left. I didn't realize you didn't have one. Sorry. We have the, old, the we have the overview, the assessment yep. overview. Um, has that changed? The request is forty three nine two four. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna wait for her to bring back the copy. Okay, Forty-seven. Sure. Hold on, I need this. I state some for myself. Uh, yep, the total is uh forty-five thousand one forty-nine for the uh forty-five one forty-nine one forty-nine. Plus, there's also, um, I assume you do the capital improvement requ or capital requests in a different meeting. Um, yes. I'm not sure how it should be. Yeah, well, it should, yeah. but seeing how you're here, yep. then this would be a good time to discuss that. Okay. So in addition to the, to the budget, I also submitted a request for $6,250 to, um, that would be Waitley's portion as well as the same for Sunderland where Deerfield's request was 12,500 for a capital request to go towards a cash match for a new for an additional van. Uh, MassDOT has a program that we applied for for a grant um, where they'll pay, pay 80% of the vehicle. The vehicle will um, last for eight years or 150,000 miles. Um, and at that point, we could always trade it in for another one or, you know, expand the fleet um, current. And that would be uh, a 14 passenger vehicle, uh, no CDL needed, just a class B, like the current vehicle is, um, where we would have uh, two wheelchair accessible seats on there. Um, in addition to the one wheelchair accessible seat that we have available in the current vehicle, the current vehicle, as you may or may not know, was donated by the town of Hatfield um, through their COA. It's a 2011 um, Econovan. It's a seven passenger with one wheelchair accessible seat. So currently we're able to rent um, a van from either uh, Cosmecus or another place. Um, we utilized enterprise rental as well as borrowed the high school van, but unfortunately those vehicles are not wheelchair accessible. So our concern is to be able to bring folks from the community to the senior center or to medical appointments through wheelchair accessible uh, vans. So that's why we're submitting the request. We're currently offering around um, last year, uh, calendar year, we offered 313 trips, um, and I believe it was for maybe 44 vehicles, which is in um, individuals within here. Thank you so much. Um, so I just wanted to share that. Okay. So that's a separate capital request for 6250. Mm -hmm. 6250. Um, 6250. Yes. So I, I see our request here or your request for 2025 is 43,924. And that you're saying doesn't include the 6250. 
Correct. I'm sorry, it should, it's not 45,149? Um, she just changed that. I just gave an updated request. Oh, you got it. I got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. You had some of the old sheets. The, 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 oh, uh, the one that was just right. The ad okay. page. Actually, I believe it was the page that was just handed out. Forty-five thousand one hundred and forty-nine dollars. Right. It's a request. Right. In addition to the sixty-two fifty, the sixty-two fifty is a capital request. Mm -hmm. This is for our operating budget. And if you, um, so the majority of the expenditures that increased on here are salary. They're going up a, approximately 2% or 2.5% through the personnel board through Deerfield. As you know, with Deerfield being fiduciary, that's where um, we're paid through. Um, their personnel committee makes those decisions. Um, it is just let me interrupt you. Yeah. Is, is that two and a half? Um, you said that's in line with what Deerfield is doing. That's what Deerfield's doing. Okay. Last year it went up, I believe, about five, five and a half percent right. because they did a cola plus a step. Yep. Um, so this year it would be just a cola increase. Okay. So I believe that number was finalized when we were working through this, it was still in process. Um, because as you may have read, um, you know, in the papers. There have been um, with Deerfield. There was a a deficit for cap, you know, for their regular cash. So, mm -hmm. uh, but they recently received the grant for road repairs. So I don't know how that's influencing the additional changes. Um, but to my knowledge, we're looking at two two and a half percent. Um, so that's where that increased. Last year we increased, um, or excuse me, in March of this year we increased. Our outreach coordinator position to 35 hours. So we are paying for half that position through this particular operations budget. Additional funding is also coming through the formula fund grant, which is funded through the state of Massachusetts uh, annual budget. The state distributes uh, currently $14 per older adult ages 60 and older. That was an increase this year. Um, so that does not need to be voted on. That's just additional funding that's available to us. Uh, but where the majority of the increase went up was the retirement funding because the previous year for 24, it was just my salary or just me being um, with a retirement pension fund. And because we increased our outreach coordinator to full time, that is uh, his increase as well. Um, is, the, is, is that the only additional personnel? That you've brought on board. I mean, just increase that from half to full. Any the other, we have another part-time position um, that is 19 hours. Our program coordinator uh, came on board. Our new program coordinator came on board in January. Tom Patria. He's working out great. Um, so he is at 19 hours. That is fully funded through the Formula Funds grant, which is not submitted through here. Uh, so I'm not looking at that right now. We. With the increased membership, I would like to float the idea for fiscal 26 to make him, you know, to have that position become increased the full time, whether we're looking at 35 hours. Um, because as a staff of two full timers and one part timer, we're so struck, um, you know, to, to make sure that we have all of the services and supports in place for the seniors. Um, we're averaging right now for the last calendar year, we had 407 active members um, at the center. So um, we have definitely increased since I first started in 2022. Um, just, to, just to go back, I applied for grant funds and we've received um, $273,993.95 in grant funding for the fiscal year 2024. We, um, I break that down for you on the last page, but because of that grant funding, the administrative overhead has increased by almost double um, for the town of Deerfield because of their, their work um, pertaining to that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just wanted to share. So where's, where is that number? What's the that number is the fifteen thousand nine hundred under administrative overhead. 
on the first, if you flip that form over, John. Yeah. No, okay. your other, the budget form here. Like budget changes, support requests to increase. Yeah. Okay. So that's not because our operations budget, you know, has inflated to that much. It's because of the additional grant money that we've received, um, which has allowed us to distribute iPads and uh, digital reimbursement stipends to those who reside in Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley. We have a second lottery currently going out that will end at the beginning of May uh, because we only received 83, or we only had 83 participants for the iPads um, and eight for the stipends. Mm -hmm. So um, we're still paying rent. We have an RFP going out at, um, that is currently out. We are hoping that will be split. Everything will be in on Friday this week. So right now the budget is based on the current locations where we are. Um, obviously, I don't know what proposals are gonna come in with the RFP bids on Friday, so that could change. I do not know um, at this time. So for services, let's see. For, because the outreach coordinator increased, we've been able to provide 122 seniors, uh, or excuse me, 66 seniors in 2022 to 122 seniors in 2023. So that basically doubled for the amount of support. Um, it went up an increase at 85%. So having uh, that individual go to full time really benefited us. And thank you for supporting that. Um, the transportation, like I mentioned before, um, has been has helped a lot. We have during 2023 we increased membership from Waitley by 16 new members. Um, that's from you know this calendar year, not this year. Mm -hmm. So how many Waitley members are there in total? Um, you know what? I think I forgot to put that on here. Uh, my apologies. Let me just look through here. Um, I think the previous year we had 14 new members. So that's at least 30 between the first two years of me being on board. And we have had, unfortunately, a few seniors pass away um, that we've had, you know, consistent seniors. So I want to say we probably have around um, 64 active members from Wheatley right now. You know, they don't come to every event. No one, unfortunately, from either of the three towns come to every. We have some who really try to, um, you know, who attend regularly. Yeah. But uh, my apologies. I thought I had had that in here uh, this year. 64, you said? Around there. I can send an email over to the group after um, tomorrow. My apologies. But if you take the data that I provided in the memo last year, you'll, you know, you can always add that together, increasing it by the 16. Um, okay. Um, can you speak, speak a little bit to the food support? Sure. Um, piece? We are currently offering um, two, di two different ways that we are engaging with our seniors for congregate meals, um, or actually with food support. We do the grab and go meals, which are provided through Life Path, so that is offered um, pr pretty much every day that we are open, um, except for you know the holidays. And there, because those services are not offered on the holidays. We went forward um, and started offering a Friendsgiving in 2023. We had 80 individuals attend our congregate meal there. Um, that's also a day that Life Path does not provide meals. Um, with the success of Friendsgiving, we continued this year to do our second delivery on Christmas Day. We delivered more than 36 meals to seniors. Um, this particular year. In 2022, we provided 56 meals on Christmas Day, so that was an increase of 54%. Um, we're also, uh, last year, started our first year as a partner with SNAP and the Department of Transitional Assistance through UMass. Um, we received a reimbursement of $800.98. We only 
Um, I believe we submitted four applications. We only have two approved, but you know we're also doing some outreach with folks to um, encourage them and explain what SNAP is, explain what SNAP benefits are. Some folks already have SNAP, so we're trying to make sure that they understand what HIP is, the Healthy Incentive Program, um, by purchasing fresh produce at the local farm stands and other participants that are in the uh, program. We also currently offer the Food Bank of Western Mass Ground Bag Program. That program, we currently have 32 participants that attend every month. Um, we also offer a pop-up on the second Wednesday of every month. That's our most one of our most attended days. And um, during 2023, we have more than 190 individuals receive food support from our monthly pop-up. Um, we average 50 to 75 households a month. Uh, this past month, we had 62 um, individuals come through the line. So, um, you know, we also set it up in a way where people can come through and choose what they want versus the ground bag is a program where they're given non-perishable, sometimes perishable items that they can't choose. Um, we also, with our outreach coordinator, for those who are homebound or who no longer drive, we also offer have been delivering some of those meals to, or, you know, the brown bags to them uh, on the first Thursday of every month. Okay. Um, at this point, I'd like to open and then we'll have questions, <laughs> comments regarding the South County Senior Center. Any concerns? Um, I have two questions. Go ahead. First question was the... <laughs> To, to understand, I'm new at this. That sure. the transportation van is for services that are not offered through the FRTA. Yes. Okay. And the second thing is you're adding staff for the additional van. How is that person? Is that a staff member? So currently, our outreach coordinator has been uh, providing the transportation. Okay. I'm the backup bus driver. Okay. Uh, so there's no item staff for that. Yes. So there's no line item staff. You know that's something. Um, there is a mass dot grant that we could potentially move forward to, which they would pay for 50% of a driver, where we would have to fund the other additional 50%. My goal right now is to get an additional van and to see how having that second vehicle would provide us with the data for how many people need services and support. Um, in addition to that, we do refer people to Valley Neighbors, but sometimes the accessibility issue is, the, is also a problem. But the FRTA does provide some resources for transportation, but there is that caveat where we did receive a grant um, for a little over $16,000 to be able to transport people from Wheatley and Deerfield over the line south because the FRTA will only operate in Franklin County unless it's a med ride, which they're volunteer drivers only, and they're not always available. Um, and I believe there's also the issue with the accessibility um, for their volunteer men rights drivers as well. Okay, thank you. Anyone else like to just you have an estimate of what we spent the past year on the van rental that will be saved if we a van rental? Um well the biggest the biggest concern I have um besides the cost, we probably spent around um we did get a grant through the Big E to help pay for the transportation. So that was $209 for a one day rental. Uh, we borrowed one from the high school for another. And then we, um, I think those were the two big ones that we did. We rented another vehicle to go down to the Springfield Armory Museum. Um, so we probably around $600 is what we would save, but we're not able to provide transportation on those rentals to people who are in wheelchairs or who have a different type of an accessibility need because they cannot get in and out of those vehicles. And, and your so, is, so you said. right now it's 2011. <laughs> we would get a brand new vehicle, um, you know, from doing this partnership for the capital request. Mm -hmm. um, so we would be able to still utilize the 2011 to go on you know, trips where we have additional people register and whatnot, but we would also um, be able to have a reliable vehicle if something happens to the other. If you look on the line item budget that I provided today, 
here is only around three or four thousand dollars line item budget. We went over that the amount last year because we had to buy all new tires, do all new brakes, and maintenance on the current van that we have. So, um, some communities that are as small as us, you know, budget like fifty thousand dollars for the vehicle line for a driver and for uh, maintenance. So, my request is pretty small this year. Um, my concern was really to get the the second vehicle so we could you know move forward with a, a brand new vehicle. Okay, well, well, we will certainly look at that again yeah. in the capital meeting that we have downstream. Um, I guess my only, um, I mean, things look like they're flying, uh, you got populations up. Yes. Um, and obviously the concern um, is the grant creep personnel. Now we've seen it time and time again where we have individuals funded by a grant and their role becomes so important within the context of the operation that when the grant to bring them on full time, sometimes the grant goes away, and we ended up we end up absorbing more bodies. So, I so that's that's the grant concern. that currently funds our program coordinator um, is a grant that's been there for more than twelve years. Um, oh, it's, yeah, it's funded through the EOEA. It's in this, it's in the legislature's. Um, line item budget, and that's something I don't believe will be going away. They're actually trying to increase it um, from fourteen to fifteen dollars per older adult. Mm -hmm. um, so that position's been funded solely by that way. Um, and you know, with the other grants that we currently have um, have been going to reimburse mm -hmm. our salary. So. We potentially have because we're a special revenue fund. We potentially have some carry forward funds, like we, you know, we did last year and the year before because with the pandemic hit, um, they weren't expending as much money uh, as was budgeted, and they were allowed to carry it you know, for for future use. Okay, thank you very much. We're running a little bit late, but um, not okay. bad. Um, did a good job. Thank. You. I will uh, email over. Those numbers for you to just Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, next on the schedule, and I believe, uh, yes, there's Rick Martin now. Um, we go to uh, Franklin County Tech. Um, so that's um, that's on tab eight, and um, and we have it. Um, here in front of us, Franklin County Tech. Everybody in? Yeah. Rick, you there? Yes. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, thanks for uh, thanks for the budget update. Um, how much of this do you you feel you need to address? Well, what I would like to do is just quickly spend about 10 minutes just to quickly go over the budget as it relates to Waitley, as per people expenditures, its assessments, um, and kind of give you an overview on kind of the direction that we're heading as a school district, as a member school of the Frontier School District. Um, uh -huh. So if I could share my screen, could someone give me permission to be able to do that? Sure. Okay. We're gonna try. We we'll have some. Um, yeah, we've had a uh, a change in town administration here, um, and that prior town administrator um, um, was really the uh, the techno expert, if you will, for the finance committee. Um, so what generally happens is um, if they go, there is a host, whoever let us on, there are probably three buttons to the right. If you if you hover over on your picture on their screen and it will say, if you scroll down, it will say share screen. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And then you just, and then I'll be able to share my screen if you, if you go down to me. We're getting there. Yes. All right. 
I'm good. Yeah. I'm, good. I'm in. Uh, yes. Very good. All right. Excellent job. All right. All right. So what I wanted to walk you through, and the reason why it was important to have the she uh, to have the screen shared is to help you navigate the budget book for the town of Waitley. So the budget book, as you can see, a long table of contents, but I'm not going to bore you with all of the details. I'm going to get right to the budget itself. If I go down to sources of funding right here and I click on it, it will take you. So when you get the electronic version of this budget, which you should have, um, it, you can flip around and find everything that you're looking for just by a click of the button. So when we look at assessment to towns, you can see where we've been going for the last five years, a 3% increase pretty much across the board here. Right mm -hmm. um, there. If you needed more information, if any of the watching needed more information around assessment to town, you click anything highlighted in the color blue, and it will take you to a paragraph that shows you exactly what the assessment to the town is and trends and things on that nature. And then what I'm going to do here is go back to sources of funding and go back to the per pupil chart. So this is your per pupil chart. When we scroll down to Waitley down the bottom, you see 18 students down here. Mm -hmm. and on page 48 of your budget booklet, and it's right there up on the screen if you take a look at the screen. So um, then you go over and you average 17,531 on the far right-hand column per pupil. Our average is 12,252. Um, and that just gives you an idea of where you were there. As far as your enrollment trends are concerned, I go to the next chart. It will take you to Waitley. You can see how you were 11, 13, 22, 18. As of right now, I'm projecting next year. That's why your assessment is lower than the previous year. It's because you drop from eight from 22 students to 18 students. And your assessments are in the far right as far as the trends are concerned, right down in here and right down in here, right? So you can see the drop. And um, next year, our projection is right now we have two applicants from Waitley. We have five graduating. So the numbers should be at the same or lower next year based on what we currently have. Um, when we look at where it is as far as our enrollment is concerned, I'm going to go right to uh, here. Our in-district enrollment is 571, this number right here. We are projecting around 593 for next year due to the large graduate, well, due to a graduating class of 130 and the incoming class are about 180. And um, that will get that number to around there as far as that's concerned. I'm going to go back to sources of funding. I click on the button here. And it will take me to debt service. Debt service is 15 years ago, um, not 15 years ago. Debt service is uh, windows, doors, paving, and roofing project we did eight years ago. So in year eight of that bond, how does it affect the town of Waitley? I go down here and I click on Appendix A. It will take me right to that page. And it looks like Waitley is 6421 for the 15-year bond. We're in year eight of that particular bond. And you can see that same total I showed you up here is 204. And when I go back to the sources of funding here, um, I please will- tell us, Excuse yep. me, please tell, us, please tell us what page you go to on a chart. We okay. can't all see the screen. Oh, you can't see the screen. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. All right, so um, if I go to the debt service and I click on that, that would be, I think, page 38 or 39 um, on your budget booklet. You'll see the appendix to the town. What I'm going to do is get something a little bit more cleaner for you. I'm going to go right here to my FY25 budget. And here it is. And I'm just going to get to the Word document, which will make it easier for me to navigate through it for you. And here we go. And I'll get that. And I'll just blow that up for you. And that will help me with the page numbers that you're talking about. So I can just scroll right through here. And I'll get to the sources of funding and uses of funding right here. And I'll go to that debt service page. So that should be in your booklet, page 39. Yep. Yep. All right. Yeah. 
And this will help us kind of navigate this for the town of Waitley. So at the top of each of your pages, you'll see sources of funding or table of contents. Whichever one you click will, will take you there. The sources of funding really is the whole budget. Um, so that will take it through there. Now, the Chapter 78, I know all school districts have struggled with. There's been a change in the formula in the Chapter 78 this year, where we, even though we have 11 more students in the previous year, as I showed you, um, we are actually, um, we were placed back in the hold harmless as if we had no enrollment growth. And so, as you can see, our enrollment, uh, Chapter 70 went from 429 to 4.79, 500,000. So then it went up another six, 700,000, then another 500,000. And then from last year to this year, only 17,000, even though our enrollment jumped. What they ended up doing is that they taken the whole harmless allocation of the budget that was usually out, outside of the educational budget and they merged it into the educational budget to make it look like the governor had an increase when actually it wasn't an increase. Um, so that kind of brought us down to that number here. And when you look at the chapter 70 for any town that you're going to be associated with the DOR cherry sheet, you click on this, it takes you to the cherry sheet. This is where we get our numbers that five, nine, seven, four chapter 70 and the eight, five, five is our regional transportation. If you wanted to find out, you know, Frontier, Deerfield, your elementary schools, anywhere you wanted to go, Franklin County Tech, you click on the Franklin you, you click on the cherry sheet for the Department of Revenue, and it will take you to an external link. That link, all you got to do is go to all regional schools up top here. You scroll down to Franklin County Tech. You click, and you just press submit. And those same numbers that we have in our budget book are the same numbers the state has right here. Now, I've done this long enough to know that some school districts don't have the same numbers. So that's up to you guys to figure that out. Um, with any other school district you want to take a look at because all of them are listed right there. So when I, when I go through that exercise, I go back up to the sources of funding and then we go down to state transportation. We just did that one, 855. As you notice on the cherry sheet that we had, we actually lost money um, from the previous year, about $67,000, even though we have more students than we did the previous year. Um, to make up for that difference, we do have non-member towns. So we have 35 students that we utilize for a non-member town. So that jumped up to 600 uh, to 752,000. And then uh, we had uh, other revenues and excess and deficiencies. And that pretty much is how we got our money and how we spent our money is this last column. Then I'll take any questions that you may have. Um, we had, we had an evening school that we went up in and some colds that you saw the, the the mild increase in administrative. Instructional services actually went down, and that was really due to the previous year. We had our evening school coordinators and our instructors within the operating budget, which are no longer. They're now tied up in a grant. Mm -hmm. And now we have um, on page 12 here, we have our student services went up 100000 That's because... Our SRO is tied up in the ESSA money. Now it's going back into the operating budget, but will most likely come out after we submit for the April COPS grant, the federal COPS grant, but it's temporarily up in that category. Uh, pupil transportation, we got the new vendor this year, went up for 14% right there. Um, plant operation and maintenance. Now we have two new outbuildings since the last time we met. We have a new veterinary science program, which we are hopeful. It did impact the town of Waitley a few years ago where students were going for animal science programs to Smith Volk and paying over $50,000 a year. We now have that program. We now have a animal science veterinary program. Sorry about that. And what we have is this new building that we built here. Our students did a lot of the stuff on the interior. Um, that's our veterinary clinic. And that enables us to keep students in Franklin County um, that have that particular interest. Our other outbuilding that we have is a competitive grant that we received, $4.2 million plus associated equipment. And that's our new aviation program. Um, and that's going up for next fall. So there's the addition of those two relatively new particular programs, which 
you can see that's why we have that increase in cost. Um, mm -hmm. So, and then all of the contributions, insurances pretty much stayed the same, no big increases and all that. Um, the cap, here's the big number that you want to take a look at line 10 and 11. So line 10 was what we used to call our asset acquisition. 15, 16 years ago, we had 13 new HVAC rooftop units and new boilers, energy efficient for $5 million, which we did through the Siemens project um, for a performance bond. That averaged $500,000 a year coming off this line. Nice. And what happens is we take that $500,000, we put it into capital stabilization because we don't want to go out to bond on several different occasions to our cities and towns as it relates to an MSBA project coming down the pike. That feasibility study is about $1.5 million. And rather than hit the towns with a long-term 15-year bond of $1.5 million, we were able to predict that the asset acquisition money was going to end, and we rolled that money into capital stabilization here so to try to get ahead of the curve so we don't have that impact to our towns. Um, and that's pretty much how we spent our money. Um, the other last part that I will show you today is you're going to get a lot of questions about this as you're moving through is basically what are we doing with the ESSA money? So you what was that? I'm on mute. They can't hear. I just I, I can't turn my can't turn my camera off. So put all my papers on. But anyway, <laughs> I'm I've been oh, production groups. So our rest of money um in your budget book beginning on page 22, you're going to be seeing how we spent all of our rest of money, right? So on page 22, you're going to see how we got the, the first allocation, everything we spent it on. There's an explanation on why. The <laughs> year, all the um, items, a lot of the PPE stuff is on there. You'll see that. Then we go through the ESSA two line items on page 23. Um, and you'll see what we spent the money on there. And then our ESSA three money. And we already talked about the SRO is going to be rolled into a grant in April. Um, that was in there um, originally, but it explains where all the money was. And I thought that was important because so many people are struggling with what do they do with the salaries that were tied up in ESSA? Well, we thought never to put the salaries into ESSA because we knew it was going to go away. Um, I, one last thing I'm going to point you to. For, first of all, these are all our entitlement grants on page 24. Everything that we get and everything that um, every other school district gets, by the way. Um, we just wanted to lay it out for where that money comes from. And competitive grants. This is where I think we've worked real hard since 2014. These are grants that aren't available to all school districts. You have to fight for them. And we've received $9 million since 2014, which helps uh, pay for many of the things I showed you today. Um, so that's kind of where we are. And that's on page uh, 25. Again, there's a lot more to the budget book. There's a lot, of, there's hundreds and hundreds of clickable links. And if you can't sleep at night, this is a great place to go. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Um, you do a terrific job of putting a budget together and, uh, and we could spend hours here. Um, I'll just throw it out to the group here. Uh, does anyone have a specific question for Rick in regards to Franklin Tech? I do. Okay. Rick, your adult education program at night. Yep. Um, and I, so it's grant funded right now, but it's not going to be grant funded in the future. Well, right now it's grant funded. That is correct. For the last, this is going on year three. Um, okay. And what we're intending to do is utilize this as a jumping off point for future adult programs for the community that when the grant money runs up, we will now be in a position to um, establish our own evening programs without the grant money. Um, but that would be our goal. That's going to change our whole focus. In order to make that happen, adult students in the area aren't going to be able to afford thousands and thousands of dollars to attend a night school course. But if we work in partnership with industry, and through our program advisory board, the industries are always looking for their personnel 
to gain more skills. And so we can utilize our program advisory boards in the future. So we're already trying to pave a pathway to run our own programs when and if this grant money runs out. We're told it's going to go five more years, but that's coming from the state. And so I always am cautious when they say five years. Okay. The, the issues that I had about it, I'll be brief. I know there's a lot of people doing things. I'm, I have two students, or one that current and one former student that's both employees of mine, was a, uh, uh, an apprentice right now through your co-op program. When I toured the school, they invited me up to see the carpentry program. I'm a building contractor. They have all these amazing new tools they bought with this grant that only the night kids, could, night people can use, and the regular students can't use any of them. They're using ancient stuff. So they have a whole tool grip full of tools that the kids that need to use, they can't use them. And then the second part of it is that my apprentice that works for me now, he was the assistant to the night program this past education season. He doesn't know anything. He got paid $25 an hour. And all they did was take the guys and run to the carpenters union. Everything was about the carpenters union. They take them on a truck. Everything was about the carpenters union. My comment was, why isn't the carpenters union paying for this? It, why, why are they not putting their instructors in this program? Why are we using tax dollars for it? Excellent so, question. Yeah. So what happens is um, we have had a, a a large turnover in our carpentry staff. We Our primary objective with the carpentry program is to give the kids real world experience. We have built a house every single year. So the carpentry students going on the house, but unfortunately due to COVID and due to the change in staff, a lot of those projects have been stalled. We have since just started that rate right back up. We did hire a new instructor. We're currently interviewing for another new instructor because I agree with you. These programs are very much going to be driven by um, the expertise of the instructors that are in the shop. So we're well aware of that. So we're moving instructors out that don't have that expertise and we're moving new instructors in. We're maintaining our house project relationship and we're rejuvenating that. So it is a program in transition. Okay, but I might like, why why can my senior guy that I have right now, why can't he use the tools that are brand new? Why does he got to use the stuff that's so old? Why why can't they share the stuff? We, I, I couldn't believe that. It blew my mind that they have this whole tool group full of tools that none of the kids will not be used. It was not um it's not my understanding that's the case. Okay. Uh, we That's have, what they said to me when I went to that night, that information night. That's what they were saying. So. Right. Again, you have uh, you have other instructors that have since moved on. Um, okay. uh, our primary tools, equipment, the most modern stuff is used for our day students because we feel it's very critically important. We, we have spent, as you just saw, $9 million in competitive grants to retool all of our shop programs. That's directly going to our kids. The evening school programs, they have to buy their own tools and they lock them in a different um, area of the facility. Okay. I'm sorry, they made it out to me that they got grant funds to buy tools to educate all these evening students. Mm -hmm. And those the, the regular day students weren't allowed to use any of that stuff. That's, that's what, what I'm that was not true. That's not my understanding. That's correct. And then also the other piece was that it was all about the carpenters union. So why wasn't the carpenters union if we're catering them to get them into the carpenters union, why aren't they funding some of this? Again, I don't know who's driving going to the carpenters union. That's not anything they that do. to me. Dude, my, my, my guys, my my kid is one of the instructors. Right. He's like, yeah, field trips to the carpenters union. That's what we do. So that's for the evening program, correct? The evening program, yeah. Right. So the evening program is a state-run program. It is not specifically a Franklin County Tech program. Each student right. um, is funded through the state, through the mass higher and regional employment board. So it's it's not controlled in that respect from a funding perspective or okay. even from perspective from Franklin County Tech. Okay. Thank you. Um, you good, JD? Okay. Rick, thank you very much. I got two very quick questions. Uh, what's, what's your cost per pupil? Our average is uh, $12,251. Okay. And what's your call up to staff? Uh, this last contract cycle, I think, was three percent. Three percent, okay, very good. Anybody else have any uh additional questions for Rick? Um, again, um, although the per pupil for um 
Waitley is like 17,000 and change. Although we do have a half a dozen towns over 18,000, Waitley's in like that $17,000 range. Okay. And your uh, choice, school of choice cost is 18 grand? I yeah, that's, I... that's usually for the three students because Monty Tech has school choice. So if we have three students from Orange, Massachusetts, that's a member school district, and they choose to go to Monty Tech for a program we do not offer by state statute, they are allowed to attend Monty Tech. So we have to put in the $6,000 per student for school choice into our budget. All right. Thank you for the explanation, the overview. Um, again, uh, very comprehensive. And uh, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, that is great with me. Okay. Um, okay. Um, highway. We are not bad. We're only 10 minutes behind. That's not bad. 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 That's <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Whoa, watch out. Go home. Okay. That's everybody got it? Uh, yep. Yes. Um, got it. All right. Mr. Barnwell, right. um, it's all yours. What I'll do is just like in the past, I'll, I'll hit on the on changes to the budget from this fiscal to the proposed fiscal year from the previous. Okay. Um, Good. And so when we go into the general expenses, general highways, um, a minor change of $100 in the uniform. But the, the big one is line painting. And that is primarily due from what the contract and what the bids are coming in as last fisc from fiscal year 23 to 24 was a 33 percent increase in my cost to the through the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. The, the pigment for the paint is a driving factor there. And so to continue doing the line painting as we've been doing mm -hmm. has, has driven that cost up dramatically. Um, and it was only maybe five years ago, we actually, it was about the time we stopped using the sand on the road that we found that our line painting, we can go every other year on almost every road. So I'm pretty much down to the point where I'm doing the half, only half the town per year. So even by reducing but that is still driving factor on, on that. So that's why that's such a high increase. Mm -hmm. And that is real that is the only change in the, the general highways general expense account. Okay. Um moving on to the next page when we get into the the winter road expenses. Salt is another one, and I'll go over that a little bit. Um, if you look back to what we spent in 23, it was 58,000, yeah. um, which was way over budgeted. And that year, we needed to we needed to do a um, declare an emergency and get more money put in the budget to, to finish that year out. The way things are going right now, you know, we had increased in. Um, to the 24, we went up to the 40,000, and the way things are looking right now, um, we're in good shape. But the question is, um, or a few things I can say to it is in FY23, when we spent that 58,000, the price per ton on salt jumped up to almost a hundred dollars a ton. Presently, I'm back down. $73, which is a drop of about 26%. However, I don't know where next year will go. So what I just trying to prepare a budget that I feel is making um covering where I think we need to be, I'm adding five thousand dollars. But at the same point in time, as we all know, 
we can play the game where if we want to pull that 5,000 out of there, I'm, I'm okay with it. But I just want to it might have make to you back. aware. Yeah, it'll go, we'll we get it pull back. that five. Yep. Um, to leave it. But that's, that is some wiggle room because yeah. of the, of the $40,000 that I have in this fiscal year, I'm right about 20, um, where's my notes here? I'm looking at, from the overall winter roads, I'm looking at returning about 30,000 right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it might snow twice in the next week. It might. <laughs> However, with the materials I have on hand, other than overtime, You'll be all right. I still feel I'd be looking at returning 30000 in out of that account. Okay. So keep that in mind that yep, yep. you need, yep. need that money. Sure. It's going to probably be there. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that's really, at the moment, the only change I made there is that 5,000 and I think I explained why I put it there. Yep. Other than that, um, when we get into um, garage maintenance, again, uh, a little bit changing with um, the phone costs were up a little bit in the heating oil and the miscellaneous, I dropped a little bit. So again, it's only an additional increase of $200 there. And when I move into the um, the tree, tree department, um, advertising. Advertising is killing us is when we have to do legal notices for tree hearings. Um, it is unbelievably expensive to put a legal notice in. So you have to advertise could you explain that? What, what? Yeah, Chapter 87 of Mass General Laws requires us when we have trees that are going to be cut, we have to have a tree. We have to advertise and have a tree hearing. Really? And in some cases, if it's on a um, a historic, if it's on a, a historic um, scenic road, mm -hmm. then I need to have a joint hearing with the planning board as well mm -hmm. in order before we can cut them down and. Again, it's just we do the very bare minimum as far as advertising, but mm -hmm. um, it's unbelievable what we spend just to put in, and we only kind of do it once or twice a year. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, really, that is that is it in regards to my entire budget as far as changes. Um, so I'll open it up to if you, anybody has any specific questions about that. I got a question on uh, uh, salaries. Or uh, I see from twenty twenty one to twenty two to twenty three, their steady increase, which makes sense. And then from twenty four to the request, uh, it's zero increase. Why is there not? That is because nothing. No call. Uh, one cold. Uh, personal. Personnel committee makes a recommendation, and That's once okay. the select board oh, and the okay. finance committee make a determination of what they're going to represent, those numbers will get back. Okay, right. Back work backwards into the budget, and that should be the way most uh, all the budgets are as far as labor goes. Okay, I'm really just uh, appreciate it. Uh, you have to yeah. but one that thirty thousand dollars, if I know correctly, will revert to free cash, not right. not be. Right. No. You'd not be usable no. in the course of time. The only thing is, if you had, a, if you were to have a special town meeting, you could transfer it. This could, yeah, but we're not having a special town meeting before the annual town meeting. So, okay. <laughs> you know, well, I'm, I'm and the other thing is, uh, has hasn't the state approved extra chapter ninety funds? Correct. How does how does that fit into your budget? That won't impact my budget. At all because that money it will be is earmarked towards the towards road work like black top stolen oil exactly. okay maintenance chapter ninety doesn't go into effect as far as you can't buy gas and oil and can you, can you use it for salaries it's, it's it, no it, it used to be I don't know if it can anymore um, but. It's very, um, it's very labor intense because 
you can't, when you are using it, it has to be very specific. You can't have anybody else doing anything else. You can't stop the go mow lawns. You can't, it's, right. it, it's a very, so tracking it is a nightmare. Okay, so don't even you don't even bother and with it. And most I don't know any town around that still does that. That's right. that, that that's that practice ended in Waitley about thirty years ago. Yeah, you just use the money for blacktop stone and oil. You know, it's it's one of those things where again, this when when you look at the the criteria on what eligible expenses are, it's a, it's a, it's one of those things. And if you want to spend it on things other than buying. Blacktop or repairing. No, roads. I want to spend it on blacktop. Then, then yeah. if you do spend it on other things and then your roads are right, you're going to pay so for it one way or another. Pay for it one way or another. And that's why most towns do not use it other than <clears throat> putting it into upgrading the pavement surfaces of the road or other cat characteristics, guardrail, things of that nature that your normal operating budget do not. Right, encompass. Any other questions um, so two, on the highway? Two things, Mr. Chair. There's in your packet a uh, line item for Keith's retirement and also a highway employee, so they'll have vacationing sent by rank. So there's a sheet in the packet that we have that's an additional mm -hmm. to okay. So this may be his last appearance before the. I think it's good. Yeah. No, I think he's got one more. I'll be there. So it's a retirement payout, $17,000. Retirement payout? So we'll probably put There's, that under unclassified, but since it's in yes. the library department, two employees. Okay. Um, well, I wasn't prepared for that. No. So that's one of those curveballs. <laughs> What's the shocker? You're so young. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he started when he was 18. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know what we would do with people. I mean, there's what's in there is in there. We'll discuss it. Yeah, I just know. wanted you to make a note to stick it in your uh, okay. budget books there. And we also have the capital issues, um, which I would imagine you're going to return for that. Well, I mean, I can talk a little bit about it. Okay. Um, well, while we're here, the, the scenario in regards to replacing the the pickup, um, when the whole conversation started a year ago, um, I had thought. And I think maybe other people had too that part of the green community agreement that when the town had signed on and was getting money from the green communities that we needed to have an electric vehicle if it was available in the class of the vehicle that we were replacing. Mm -hmm. However, it's apparent, it's clear that we don't have to buy a full electric, it, it can be a hybrid. Mm -hmm. However, it has to be one of the two. We can't just have a straight gas or a diesel engine in that class vehicle. We have two hybrids now. And so the police department. The, the, the police cruiser has one hybrid. Well, he's pursuing a second. Okay, but what I'm getting at is because it is available, it's okay. the same, same scenario why it works for him. But it, because the, the pickup truck, the classification, the hybrid is available. It's a requirement that we do. So okay. we have a choice of either elect full electric or hybrid. Hybrid. Um, hybrid. The hybrid, I've looked into it a little bit more. And, and again, until I, I got more of a direct directions how to actually pursue this, I haven't spent an awful lot of time, but I can tell you that we can probably, I do not, was the electric, was that 85,000? That was yeah, in the capital. 85. Was right? 85. Yeah. Oh. If we go hybrid, we can drop down, we can take 20 out of that. Yeah. Okay. Without, you know, we can take 20 out of that. Hybrid. hybrid. Absolutely. And go that route and meet the requirements for the green communities. Perfect. 
But you so, may not be driving up here. I may not. But so probably not. It's, so then you, if successor should um, at this point we, we should try to try to go with like the Prius. Prius. Well, <laughs> the Prius truck. <laughs> and the pickup still total things on a not not a daily basis, but an occasional, and there's things of that nature. As we all know, I think we all know here, but I'll mention it that I've also been told that the town is not going to get rid of this vehicle, that it is going to be kept in inventory in the cemetery. Okay. We'll start to use one of one of our one of the extra vehicles, the extras, yep. because yep. they no longer have the ability to tow the lawnmower. Yeah. Uh, so um, what's the status of the 550? It has only thing I can tell you is it's been ordered. Um, <laughs> it's 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 very frustrating because they're they're still pushing twenty threes. You can go still buy a twenty three brand new out on the lots, and the twenty fours are just not. There there are just they're just they're, Did we spec a twenty three or a twenty four? <laughs> when we when we put the the order in, the twenty threes were. Yeah, close. I thought we were getting a twenty three. 23s were already closed. Oh, they were closed. Oh, yeah. They've already shut that down. And I don't even know where, where I'm at at the moment. I, I keep talking to them. One of the other things we I tried very strongly and even looked at other dealers in the area is just trying to find something in inventory. But the majority of them are all that meet our specs more or less. They're diesel. Yeah. And... The, 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 the gasoline for us has worked. Um, it's an extra ten thousand dollars, which I don't have to, to go to the diesel. Yeah. And the two thousand and eight is gas, and it has never had it. We've never had an issue with it nope. in all those years, and so um, I don't see the need to come back and ask for more money when I feel that the gas will will be suffice. But if we can't get one, if something happens well, to this one, then I, yeah, at the moment, I'm not feeling that maybe we'll take the 20 that we're going to save on the pickup and <laughs> but we like half enough. of it and buy diesel, but, yeah, yeah. But I mean, whatever, let's so, just pray. So that's that. all I can tell you on that. It had okay. been ordered months ago, and okay, that's the vehicles. That. Um, the other, the other, the other item that I'm that I know that I'd asked for this for this fiscal year was the, the guardrail mower type thing, which is meant to go on the front of our tractor. Um, and what that does is that goes around underneath galvanized guard, you know, the galvanized guardrail on the side of the road. It can go right underneath and go right down the side of the road. It's very similar to um, a mower that a lot of um, farms that have trees, orchards, and things like that. It'll wrap around and, and, and go right around it and not, not do any damage to the blades and stuff. So whether it be the white concrete post or galvanized yeah. yard really can, can go right around it and it tremendously reduces the amount of, mm -hmm. of, of hand labor work. Um, also, because Waitley doesn't spray any type of pesticides or chemicals, the amount of Poison ivy that are on our sides of the roads are just outrageous, and it leads to our employees having to take time off from work because they get so much blisters on them, on their arms and legs that they can't work. So there's days where we don't have our all of our employees because they're staying home from that kind of aspect. So uh, about the gloves, it don't matter whether you wear. We it try to matter. everything. We have. We give them <coughs> free wipes and post wipes. You're everything. Just thinking about it. And it yep. And so been there, done that. So it's just another thing we're trying to do to 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 be able to better maintain the sides of our roads. Okay. So, thank you. Any questions? No. Nope. Good. Well, good enough. Again, job well done. Thank you very much for coming in and giving us the explanation of where the money's going. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Steve.
Okay, we are now, we are now, we are still 11, just 11 minutes behind. It's not bad. Okay, we are going to move right Tri from Town highway Beach. right into Tri Town Beach, our own waterfront, lakefront. Lake. Lake. <laughs> Come on up. Come on up. And so some of us are old and we can't hear well. So that's uh Tom, I'm up thinking of you. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Good. So my name is Ken Cutterback. I'm from the town of Deerfield. I'm a representative on the Trade Town Beach Commission from Deerfield. And uh, we submitted a budget request this year to the folks. Um, Somebody find that. Yeah. Where we go? Two. Right, number two, CRS one. Okay. And did you submit um, a line item budget or just the overview? Just, um, just the overview. I, okay. mean, I have a line item breakdown here that I could have to be copied for you. Can you copy that for you? It's really small. I believe the request that she's copying has a, a, a funding request of ten thousand yeah four hundred dollars, right, right. which is a reduction over last year's budget. Right, right. Um, and, uh, she's got well, you want to give us a little rundown of Tri Town as to uh, what's going on there? And sure, uh, um, we've <clears throat> we've been reopened for two seasons. And uh, been working our way through issues. Uh, I'm chiming as well, but uh, uh, you know, affecting repairs and bringing things back up to speed and trying to get the, the weeds under control. And uh, this past summer, we were able to purchase a new raft to replace the old wooden one that had fallen into disrepair. Um, and uh, had a, a pretty good season considering the fact that I think about 70% of the summer was green. Mm -hmm. So our, uh, our permit, you know, permits and uh, attendance wasn't as good as the prior, the previous year. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're hoping that that's a, a reflection of the, the rain mm -hmm. as much as anything. Um, but the, the beach is in, in pretty good shape. We brought, as I said, we brought the uh, facilities back up. We have some repairs to make this spring, but they're all covered by the funds that we have available to us in the current budget. So um, we're able to uh, make some pretty significant repairs to the pump house and infrastructure associated with the bathhouse. There's two copies there. In the first page and the second yeah, page. Like we don't need the summer swim program. Yeah. 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 The, the summer swim yeah. program well, is a Deerfield budget. Is a Deerfield budget. Sorry about that. That's <laughs> okay. Um, mm -hmm. So what, uh, what's happened is over the first two seasons that we've been back in place, we were running um, gatekeepers and lifeguards in tandem, and that was our primary salary structure, but we found that we needed more lifeguard coverage. We have two camps that are taking advantage of the beach. And uh, when they're there, we need additional staffing on the lifeguards right. to make sure that we're able to watch uh, the extra the extra young population that's there. Um, so what we've done is we've revamped our salary structure for the coming year, and we're going to hire seven but we have hired seven lifeguards uh, that will staff the beach. We'll have three on duty when the camps are in place, or two on duty at all other times. Yep. The lifeguards on weekdays will serve as the gatekeepers. And, uh, Good idea. And monitor the traffic there, and then we will have gatekeepers on the weekends. So there's, there was some salary savings there, um, although I... Uh, 
overall, the, the salaries remain essentially the same from year to year. Uh, if you if you glance at this, if it starts with salaries, and then <clears throat> just below the gatekeepers, you'll see a vegetation management plan, um, which we have um, funding set aside for for next year. Uh, right now, we're in the process of trying to finalize our management plan. It's been submitted to the Wavy Conservation Commission, and then it has gone to uh, I never get the name right. The initials are NHESP. We have an endangered plant species that grows along the shoreline. So anything that happens, it's a national heritage site. Anything that happens or is submitted has to go to the national heritage people as well. It's a national heritage site. National heritage endangered species. <laughs> and even though it was built. It built the highway. It's man-made. You know, you're preaching to the choir. Wow. <laughs> man-made pond. It is a man-made pond. It is a man-made pond. Yeah, they dug it. But for some miraculous reason, this little tiny bulrush, oh, uh, dwarf bulrush, oh, grows. dwarf bulrush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiny yeah. Little They'll bring the town down. down. You can it. Yeah. And it only comes out late season into the fall so you have to when we get it surveyed we have to wait until the fall to do it and in order to get the final well supposedly according to our consultants to get the final approval from nhesp we have to do another survey so um, we presently have a 6800 dollars proposal not to exceed 6800 dollars um, that would have been covered under that is covered under this year's budget but can't do it until July or August. <laughs> so, so we're, um, and Mark wasn't here last night, so he doesn't know this. We, we put things on hold. We haven't signed the contract or anything yet. We're going to sort of discuss it at our next meeting, whether we want to proceed with this, you know, authorize this work in the fall, or if we want to just work through the summer and see what happens with the vegetation. It, it hasn't been as bad as it was prior to COVID. Mm -hmm. Prior to shutting the beach down for two two years, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we're going to discuss it a little further. Um, <clears throat> but there's a four thousand dollar number in the budget that you see there. It's kind of highlighted in gray. Yep. That four thousand dollars was actually for the treatment that's proposed by the management plan. Obviously, you can't do the treatment. Um, so. Yep. Uh, but we want to leave the four thousand in place in case anything else arises. Mm -hmm. um, then you have uh, maintenance and mowing and landscaping, liability insurance, and that gives you uh, total town expenses, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. And then below that are the items. Well, this is something that was set up that I inherited, but. Below that, there are expenses that can come out of the revenues from the sale of permits to the beach. So we have things such as supplies and the testing of the water, the, the weekly testing of the water, uh, printing for various purposes. Uh, it says picnic. We try. We haven't done it yet in two years, but we, we hope to have a picnic for you know people that have bought the permits and to get. You know, let people see what the beach is like and so on. And uh and permits and South Deerfield water and and so on. So uh, that's how the budget comes together. <clears throat> we have the net expenses over revenues of about forty-five thousand two hundred and fifty, and your share is twenty-three percent. Mm -hmm. The total expenses. Your bill covers the rest. Thank you. Do we have any questions, Ken, regarding the Tri Town Beach? That's about the best explanation we've had in a long time. <laughs> <How's> that? <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank then, you. Uh, just, just uh, go ahead. How many uh, waiting brackets use the beach? Now you're asking a question. I don't readily okay. ask. I don't have to, and interestingly enough, I, even though we had fewer people, uh, I don't have the breakdown of the permits. Okay. So last year, I think there were about 70 um, permits sold. Uh, the biggest 
the North Bay Valley previous, but um, a fair number of weekly residents. Okay. You know, it's pretty pretty evenly balanced between the two Is the revenue in here? Um, I think it says. The total expense on revenue is the line at the top of the receipt. Oh, receipts, okay. Around $10,900. Yeah. 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 But what's the cost? What will be the cost this year, do you think, for a day pass? Or are you selling seasonal passes? Uh, it's a, we sell, well, we sell day passes. I mean, we sell seasonal passes. They're $50 for the season. Mm -hmm. And then there are day passes. Uh, Twenty. I think it's twenty dollars for this for the you know for a day pass. Yeah. yeah. And then if someone wants to have an event, we'll charge a couple hundred bucks. Yep. And we did have one event last year. We had multiple inquiries. So um, depending on the weather, right? weather has a lot. To do yeah. Anything else, but yeah. Yeah. any programs thinking about downstream? I know we talked. There, there was some talk about having. Some kind of small boat, whether it's kayaks or. Um, um, so what we do have uh, an inventory of kayaks. Mm -hmm. We have, like, I think, three kayaks that we offer for rent and uh, paddle boards. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we are trying to expand that inventory this year, and we're hoping more people. And uh, yeah. right now, we're looking into the water aerobics program mm -hmm. for the senior centers. Uh, Good yep. senior center. Yep. And uh, there's also uh, the possibility of trying to have kayak and indoor paddle boarding instruction <laughs> offered so that we can increase interest in that. Now, will you allow outside people to bring their own boats in or paddle boards in? If they have a permit, they can paddle board. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> there you go. That's that. There you go. All right. Well, we have a Tri Town Beach again. And uh, that's a good thing. Is the pond uh, spring fed? Spring fed. It is. Yeah, it comes to this groundwater. I have the groundwater. It's truly spring fed. Yeah, I don't and know what it is. I think they dug deep enough that they. There's a turnover. The, uh, holders. It, 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 it turned. I mean, it's this is all right. Okay. Uh, we had good luck like last summer. We never knock on wood as any around. Uh, we never, we did not. Receive any um, E. coli shutdowns or anything. Oh, good. That's yeah. some. Yeah. We want to turn the piece out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Appreciate it. I would point out one thing. There was a capital request submitted. Okay. I don't know if it ever needed. Uh, I'm sure it did, but um, um, I haven't seen it. But do you have it, Dan? Uh, no, I don't remember. Okay. All right. Well, why, don't, why don't you run that by us now? Okay. Well, there was a $16,000 request. We were, we were uh, proposing putting in docking a, a 110 feet of additional uh, Dock docking it's a yeah. float system. Right. Um, that would run along from the southern shore along the eastern edge of the boundary. Mm -hmm. So instead of having rope there, we have literally a docking system it provides better safety and better access for our lifeguards right. it provides an additional area where uh, kayaks paddle boards etc can be yeah. launched it would provide a natural enclosure for aerobics programs and water aerobics and things mm -hmm. like that so what we had done was submit a uh, sixteen thousand dollar request to the cpc committees in both towns so that's for both towns, so 16 fives, both towns? 16,000, Waitley, 16,000 years ago. Oh, so it's 32,000. dollars Those are very nice docks. It's a, it's a very nice system. Good. It's a, it's a, it's a plastic float system. Yeah. We bought three sections of it and created a raft last summer. Mm -hmm. um, Mark will tell you we moved it. It's, a it's, of it's, it's forever. Basically, it's yeah. impervious to weather, stays there over the winter, yep. stays never gets watered. Absolutely. No maintenance, no upkeep, nothing except washing it down. To, yes, too dirty. Um, sure. The rain takes care of that. So mm -hmm. it's it's a really nice system, and we thought we'd run it up the flagpole with both CPC committees and see if it would be funded that way. We didn't yeah. want to have it 
be a direct part of the meat. As you know, Deerfield's flagpole is much higher than Wakefield's flagpole. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to make everyone aware of that. Mm -hmm. That's probably why we haven't seen it, is because it went to CPC. Um, I submitted it to Brian as a capital expenditure oh, okay. request and CPC request. Okay. Okay. And then, and then, it was late. It was late for the CPC. So my yeah. point was, it's not going to be this year anyway. Okay. So it'll be fiscal 26, yeah. but I wanted to alert right. you right. that it had been. Okay. I've, I've had to withdraw from Deerfield, yeah. and um, I have a few more issues to work on in Waitley, so... It will be pending, but if you want to, somebody wants to put it in, note it into the plan, it's there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. Okay. We are, uh, so yeah, we're here. Planning board 715. If we have to, still 10 minutes over. That's fine. 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 Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name? Hold on, hold on, guys. Start again. Thank you. So my name is Branchikis. I'm the chair of the planning board. I ascended to the throne in October, uh, and uh, then when the fall for the budget came out, I was told the manual that we had in the planning board was lost in the Great Fire. So this is like my best. Uh, pull the budget together for all of you. Okay. Um, you I, I assume you have this all in front of you. We gotta find it. We gotta one, find. Give us one slide. One, one, two, four, 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 Yep. You got it? I got it. Okay. Right. Basically, two main expense categories for the planning board. We need anywhere from 12 to 14 times a year. That's as far as my tenure for the last several years, that's about what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a clerk who attends our meetings. They're typically two hours in length, and then she prepares minutes and does other work. And our clerk is shared with the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay. One wild card is our clerk of many years has told me that she's stepping down. So we're working on a transition plan. This is going to affect the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals as well. Um, I wasn't aware of that when I was doing this budget, but I built a certain thing. So, I just did a rough order of magnitude budget for labor expenses based on 14 meetings a year. I estimated in total about eight hours of clerk work per meeting for all the associated pre and post during stuff. And I estimated about 20 hours, or $20 an hour of labor, hourly wage, which is a little bit mm -hmm. larger than I knew our current clerk has. Um, so that's how I came up with the clerk labor expense. The other major expense category is that, as Keith mentioned, when the zoning board, when the when the planning board bring zoning amendments up for consideration, we are obliged to hold public hearings and do legal notices. Okay. My, as best I can assess that for one such public hearing, we spend about $600 on legal advertisements in the recorder and so forth. So I built in enough for two such hearings. Sometimes we do just one a year, sometimes we do two a year. So I figured $1,200 to have for legal advertising is what we need. Um, sometimes we have that we have to spend some money mailing stuff around, notifying the butters. So there's a little bit of money set aside for postage. The um, there's a de minimis training budget of about $100. We have a significant turnover now on the planning board. JD is new on the planning board. His sister in law, Laura, is now on the planning board. Uh, one of our longest serving members, Judy Markland, is, has indicated that she intends to step down at the really? end of her term this year. End of so an era. It will be the end of an era. And that'll be yes, yet another new person to bring on uh, the board and get one. Right? Uh, Luckily, there's an organization, the Massachusetts 
uh, collaborative planning, training, collaborative that offers training online and in mm -hmm. person for relatively small amounts. So I built in some money in the budget so that our newbies can learn about what planning boards do and how we handle all the kinds of business that come up with us. And that is basically that. That's it. Okay. Questions for the planning board? Anyone? No. Oh. Comments? No. Thoughts? No. Okay. That's our plan. Thank you very much for setting a plan for the planning board. Thank Perfect. you for letting we know what's coming oh. down. You're almost, we're almost on yeah, like we, are, we are right back. We're moving right along. I'm going to take care of that. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I noticed that my budget was not in the packet out there. So I just want to make sure if you don't have them, I have some copies here. Well, let me see if I got it. Hold on. Four. One. Yep. They have. I have a budget. Forward. Yes, it looks as though we do have the budget. Right. Last meeting. Yeah. yeah. Has it been updated since the previous meeting? It has not. Oh. I, I ran a highlighter across it. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, uh, I don't have a lot of data to go with um, on the budget. We're looking at a relatively small increase, overall increase of two and a quarter percent. Um, FY24 to FY25. Mm -hmm. I've done some housekeeping on the budget just from looking at past budgets to try and um, align our line items more with realistic expenditures in the past. Uh, there's a couple that I've dropped. Um, some of the obvious ones are things like postage. Um, it's just not, we're just not mailing stuff. But if I need to mail something out, I can just bring something over here. Um, so there's a couple of things that have gone down, you know, postage. Um, electricity has gone down. I've lowered that line item slightly. Uh, communications, pagers, and radios, I've lowered that one as well. Um, we're looking at uh, receiving our um, FERCOG grant for our new pagers. Those are supposed to be coming in sometime in the coming weeks. I've been hearing about it for a while, but I think that it's finally going to happen. So, those are the 800 pagers. Yeah. Originally, it was a capital item, so it's come off capital and it's going to. It's going to be covered by this grant, so that's that's good news. That's good news. That's good news. Yeah. Um, um, let's see. Pre-employment, I've taken off of the line items because after talking with uh, um, the front office here, it, there's already a line item for townwide for pre-employment physicals. So, mm -hmm. um, and it's also kind of difficult to predict. You know, like this year, uh, we're going to have two physicals. Um, we've got one new firefighter that's uh, in the fire academy right now. The Call Ball Academy is going three days a week in Springfield. It's really good. And we have another um, gentleman in uh, West Wade who's new to town. And um, as soon as we get his physical done, I think he said he's also interested in, in uh, doing the Call Ball Academy. So that's really pretty remarkable. It's not a lot of uh, sure. volunteer or call volunteer departments that are getting people in the academy classes. Um, water and ice rescue, I just cleaned that up a little bit too. We're probably going to do about $500 worth of maintenance just to uh, keep our stuff in line on that. Um, some things haven't really changed very much, and there's a few um, items of increases. Again, I'm basically just trying to line up, align with the past expenditures. There are, if you have any questions about what's on here, feel free to, to let me know. I do have a couple of other Gary, I have to throw out there. Um, so far this year, we've done about 25 fire calls, um, roughly 58 uh, fire calls this fiscal year. We're on track to be a little bit ahead of what we've been in the last couple of years. Um, my budget uh, currently, this doesn't reflect exactly what I have out there. I've got a couple um, things that are going through the warrant right now, um, about $6,000 worth of uh, items. Um, so that's going to leave us with about 57% spent and 43% remaining, which I think is a pretty good spot for us to be in at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have another $600 or so spent this coming Saturday. It's going to be second day of one of our big trainings. We're sending some folks to still for a gas school, some live fire training. Uh, that's going to be good. Um, we have continue to pursue whatever grants I can find pretty aggressively. 
Uh, we got an $8,000 grant from the state that's going to cover most of two sets of turnout here. Um, it's going to help uh, supplement our budget a little bit. And I did put in for um, this federal grant. It's called Assistance of Firefighters Grant. Uh, one more time. It'll be the, I think, the fourth time I'm putting in for this grant. So I'm, every time we're doing it, I'm trying to you hope to tune it up a little bit, but it's a, it's a highly competitive grant, yep. to say the least. Um, How much is that for? So that's to cover our, our uh, SCBAs, and that's a FY25 um, capital item that I think is probably going to get pushed back a little bit. It's 200000 on capital. Um, the latest quote that I have from our vendors um, is actually a little bit lower than we had on capital. It's uh, around 185000 um, for SCBAs to replace all of the equipment that we have right now. The federal portion, um, if we get awarded, would be 174,000 and our local portion would be 8,000 and change, uh, which I'm pretty sure that we could absorb in the fire department budget, um, yeah. or at least absorb most of it. Um, if we're That's fortunate enough to be uh, awarded. A um, couple other things we've, I've uh, conducted about 40 inspections so far this fiscal year. Uh, most of our inspection fees are right around $25. I expect those to increase those uh, soon. Uh, we'll probably double them so we keep more in line with other towns. Mm -hmm. And that's given us, uh, given the town about $1,000 of revenue um, coming back in for those inspections. Okay. You have any questions about anything? What are you inspecting? What are we inspecting? We're inspecting all sorts of stuff. Um, uh, propane tank installations is one of the big ones that's been going on this past um, yeah. past year. There's been a lot of propane going into town. Mm -hmm. Small tanks, big tanks, and one really big tank. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, oil tank removals, um, we're, we're looking at those, mm -hmm. um, both uh, underground and um, in the basement. That's more just to make sure that the underground storage tanks have to be inspected by us. The um, the ones in the basement, we're electing to have those permitted so that we can just have a better eye and make sure that the tanks are disposed of properly and if there's no leaking in basements right. prior to resale. Um, and the other really big consistent one is what we call a 26F inspection. It's a state mandated inspection when the property changes hands or the banks can request one of the chain financing. We're looking at uh, carbon monoxide detectors, smoke detectors, uh, life safety issues. A big ticket item you mentioned previously is a breathing apparatus for several. It is. And um, Scott Air. I know everybody wants to get out quick, but I, I saved it last. There's nothing like looking at something to understand what we're talking about. So I can show you the same thing that I did for Capital. Um, and this is to replace the ones we have now that are old? It is. Um, our current air packs are, the air, air packs are regulated. Or, by, I shouldn't say regulated, but our standards are set forth by the National Fire Protection Association. And every five years or so, they come out with a new standard. And the standards um, include things like the mask, the tank, um, or the pack itself. Um, in the past uh, four changes that they made in the last 20 years or so, um, they made significant changes to include what we call the pass device. It's a device like arms automatically. Um, and if we stop moving for a prescribed period of time, it starts alerting. So if there's a down firefighter somewhere, we could find them in a building. Um, that's one really easy one to see. Some of the other more technical things have to do with the way that the regulators work. Um, this is an early generation pack. This is what the one that started out with the fire department. Um, it's a steel tank. 2200 PSI, like the other ones. It's weighs about three times more than the other ones. This is the regulator. Um, so, are we still using that? No, but this is what I what we started off with in the 80s. Okay. Um, this pack right here is the pack that we replaced those with. Okay. Um, these were purchased over a couple of years' time. Most of these packs are four generations back. They're almost uh, 25 years old, 20, 23, 24 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been replacing stuff, components to try and keep up with the NFPA standards. Um, they're no longer upgradable. They just don't make the parts to support these, these particular lines anymore. They still function, but one of the things that we're running into, like this one right here, 
Um, a lot of the O-rings um, we're having problems with, we have to replace uh, things like that. Some of the stuff we can do in house because um, Wayne's a uh, certified uh, tech, he's taking the classes. So we can do like O-rings in, in small places, but when we start dealing with things in the regulators, the two stages of the regulators, we have to send things out. Um, this is one pack that we have you know, replaced the shoulder harness and some other stuff on. Um, so it still functions, but it's not NFPA compliant for a couple of reasons. One of them has to do with the, um, the type of gauge that's on here. Um, and another reason is this is the regulator that goes on our mask. Um, the new standard is that we have a gauge on here with LEDs that tell us how much air is in the pack mm -hmm. so that the firefighters are aware, situational awareness um, of what's going on. It's also a note on it that says it leak. <laughs> yeah, that, that one's out of service right now. <laughs> Don't that, use that one. That one's out of service. And then this, this seal up a little bit of change. This is act like what we're looking at, we're replacing them with. There's two different brands um, generally in the area. This is the brand that most of um, roughly 16 of our surrounding com communities use. Smaller bottle, it's a higher pressure, 4,500 PSI. Pretty much the same volume of air, it's just in a smaller pack. But it's a different system um, where we have an electronic gauge and an analog gauge. The electronic gauge can give us more information about how quickly we're breathing, how much air is left in the tank based on your, your current uh, respiratory rate. Um, integrated batteries, a little bit different technology. Um, but that's basically where where we are, where we were, where we are, and where we'd like to go. Um, and one of the other, I'll end with this, one of the other big challenges with this system that we have right now, these are 2,200 PSI bottles. And pretty much everybody in our surrounding communities are running 4,500 PSI bottles. So that means we can't share bottles with them. Yeah. Um, and also, if we go to fill these bottles with somebody else's equipment, we have to change the regulators. We can't fill these at the same time as we're filling somebody else's bottles. Mm -hmm. And if somebody's not paying attention when they try and fill one of these and they overfill it, then there's a first disc in it. Yeah. That let's go so that the tank doesn't. But if you look at um, just, I mean, you can't reject the utilization of these, but sure. if you look back, yeah. how often, um, how many fires did you have to use these? Well, I can tell you that we have, um, we have three packs that have had the, the shoulders harnesses repaired because of heat, heat stress on them. Um, they get discolored in the the uh, um, Kevlar or the Nomex fibers start to break down. Um, I can tell you that I can't tell you each pack because it's hard hard to tell. You know, yeah, right. Some right. some might have seen Who's more going? than others, but, but I can tell you typically from from year to year, um, if we you know include our mutual aid calls, they probably get used inside. You know, in, in a structural setting, um, two or three times. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, like in live fire, you know, right, right. um, the packs are done, you know, like when people put them on mm -hmm. frequently, like if we go to a fire alarm, yeah, people are supposed to be getting out of trucks with them because we don't know what we're getting into when we go there. We wear them for carbon monoxide alarms, we're metering basements and stuff like that, mm -hmm. so that people don't get overcome. Um, you know, we would wear our packs if, uh, if we had an incident, um, with a, uh, truck coming into Berkshire gas, you know, with natural gas, like, you know, we're worried about um, oxygen levels, of, um, you know, asphyxiants, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to, it's hard to gauge. I understand it looks like it, they're not, most of our packs right now are not worn out. Um, they have components that are aging out, mm -hmm. essentially. The stuff that's worn out is the stuff that we can replace pretty easily, you know, straps and buckles and and um, harnesses and stuff like that, but the components themselves um, are what start to break down with, with time, become less reliable. Uh, we had a, a fire uh, a month ago. We had a pack. We went mutual aid and with a basement fire, and we had one firefighter that came out because um, one of these O rings in, in this purge valve right here was leaking, 
I mean, you couldn't get it to stop leaking, so her bottle ran out of air relatively quickly. And you could hear it, air just blowing right out through there. Um, How old is that one? Uh, the one, the new one I just brought? Yeah. This one is, um, uh, it's probably three years old, four years old. Who gets to use that one? <laughs> South Deerfield, because this is theirs. <laughs> What's that? How do you feel about Um, you know those bicycle pumps that we're, we're putting around town. You get a it's got a I don't know there and I don't know. start early. They're um usually a cascade system, so it's the same type of system you would fill in this uh, scuba tanks with. Okay. Yeah. There's uh, air filtration. You do it in house. No, we we go to other towns to do it. Um, we can go to Hatfield, South Deerfield, or Sutherland. Um, typically, we're going to South Deerfield, and they're letting us use their equipment there. That's one thing that um, is very expensive. It's expensive to maintain, a lot of upfront cost, um, and I think there's really not a lot of wouldn't wouldn't be. Uh, I'd, I'd rather spend money in other things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's things, resources we share with that for sure. But if that grant comes through, then that's that's going to take a lot of the expense of purchase of those. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But like um, he says he's applied for, or that somebody's applied right. for four times, and we haven't gotten it yet. Yeah, this is the fourth. Time. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I've had people look at look at the grants in the past uh, that have had successful grants, and they say they wouldn't change anything out of like it looks great. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, what's the problem? There you go. Um, okay. So you know, this this may be the year, um, but like I said, the, the the quotes came in a little bit less um, this year than they did last year because last year they were anticipating more of a price hike than that they really saw during the tail end of COVID. So, so. Um, and everything else is. Uh, Status quo, and the, the building, the. Um, oh, hopefully, nothing status quo. We hope I'm trying. We're trying to move things forward, but yeah, things um, things are going okay in the building. Um, the uh, the roof's not leaking. The heat's working. Um, we're trying to tighten up. This summer, we'll probably be trying to tighten up some of the windows and um, doors yeah. so we get a little bit better efficiency uh, with the heat in the winter. Um, uh, fix the ceiling fan. You know, in the bay that's helping move heat around in the winter really to, uh, that helps it both keep the floor dry the floor is drier but also make better use of the heat that's in there and we're really doing two different zones we're heating the the, uh, the office and the the meeting room to one temperature and the um the base to another so the bays are right around 55 you have the meeting room Usually around 58 or so. <laughs> I go in and might turn it up to 60, yeah. 60, 65, and then turn it down and we leave. But I think that helps a lot to uh, to manage the heat a little bit better in the building. I think we'll we'll see that in the uh, in the gas bill hopefully. JP, can can you speak to any um, equipment or training or anything towards our electrified future? Of what you foresee for any specialized equipment we're going to have or trainings or any of that sort? Sure. There is a lot of equipment out there. There's a lot of vendors. Um, there's a lot of people lobbying, trying to sell their, their equipment. Um, I haven't seen a lot of equipment being used because um, contrary to what you know, we, we see in, in social media and the news all the time, it's like these things are, every street's littered with burned up electric cars. But um, in the area, there have not been enough of them to really get really good data from peers about what they're using on things. There is some equipment out there that people are using, departments are using. Um, they, there's a, a big fire blanket that they use um, for an electric vehicle car fire. And what that will do is um, it doesn't extinguish the battery, but it will extinguish or slow the, the burn of the, the class A fire of the vehicle itself. Um, and we, something we would use for a fire that had an exposure. So if the fire was right next to a garage or something, or, you know, if it's a small fire, it's in the, it's in the garage. Some departments talked about putting a grapple on it, pulling it out with a blanket on it or something like that. There's a lot of what-if scenarios with, with things like that. Um, one of the better technologies that I've seen that we'll probably be getting sometime in the next year or two is a, um, 
there's a plug that they make that plugs into the charge port of the cars and it um, kind of puts the car to sleep. It makes it more safe for us to deal with. It's kind of like throwing um, in a house that has a, a battery backup storage system with solar panels. When you flip the lever on that, it de-energizes the panels. That you de-energize the wires from the panels to the um, solar panels to the panel that you're working on. But it also does the same thing for your batteries. Your batteries are still alive, but it backs them off, backs the, the voltage on. These plugs um, are universal and they'll work. And you know, and, and any um it's supposed to work in any EV and it um essentially shuts the car down. So that's something that would be useful for like a motor vehicle accident. You know, there's a lot of damage to the to the car, so you're trying to prevent something catastrophic from happening. Mm. But um yeah. not not a lot of not a lot of data out there, like real world stuff from at least from local departments. Yeah. Um we see some stuff from you know departments out west, you know, California and stuff where maybe there's a little bit more, but yeah. Even with 91 and you know, I mean you're yeah. working with Deerfield to Patfield, Northampton. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have them with blankets now or just someone? I don't. We don't have them in town here. Um uh, I know there's a couple of departments that are putting in putting together grants for them. It's one of the things that like if if we didn't pursue the turnout here, we we could have alternatively gone with um equipment like that. That's another high priority thing in that equipment list. <laughs> Uh, but I know that the turnout here was something that, you know, we could certainly use right away. And the other stuff would be more of a you know, long-term planning or wish list kind of thing. So yeah, good question. Okay. And solar panels, we're, we're, we're doing, this one of the other inspections that we're doing a lot of the solar panels and um, um, not inspecting the panels, but inspecting the plans to make sure that there's, um, if the coverage exceeds a certain amount, um, we have to be careful of how much uh, access we have around the edges of the roof and the, the peak of the roof. So that if we were to ventilate the roof or put people on the roof, we can get somebody up there safely. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what they don't want is an entire roof covered in panels because then we have no way of getting under the roof safely. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's not talk about that. Right no. Now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, look, if, uh, does anyone else have, does anybody have any questions? JP, anything? Um, just while you're here, yes, sir. and you're in front of the entire town, is the town of Whaley protected? Yes. In the fire? Yes, we are. Okay. Yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. That's the main thing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we had a, we had a really successful drill the other night at Covestro. We had uh, Hatfield and South Deerfield. We had... I think we had 35 people there, um, five or six pieces of apparatus. We were in the building, we were in the parking lot, we had a ladder truck, and well, moving a lot of water. So, cool. yeah. Good. Make it happen. Good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you JP. Thank, thank, thank you for bringing. Thanks for bringing all the stuff. If anybody wants to try an air pack on, try out for the fire department. You know, we're still taking applications, so uh, we're not retired. Hey, man, you do like a Ghostbusters thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to borrow the reservoir. Hey, do we still have the boat? Oh, yeah. Tommy's boat? Do we, we, we do. Um, it's over at the um, park by behind the police station right now. Oh, yeah. Just wonder, I haven't seen it. It is on the, um, people ask about that. When are, we, when are you going to do training on the boat or when are we going to, you know, when, when, when we get to see the boat out, they say when we when we get everything else squared away to 100%, we're like super happy with it. And, you know, that's that's something that we'll, we'll pursue. It is a good asset to have that we'll, yeah. we'll use. Um, Just as long as we don't see John fishing in that. <laughs> <stump. laughs> right. No worries. No worries. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much again. All right, you're welcome. Um, welcome to try this pack on if you want. You know, my back days, my back days are over. <laughs> All right, are we good? Um, we have a uh, a motion to adjourn. So I'll move to adjourn. I'll second. 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 All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Right. Look at that. Brenda. She's she's, um, she's, she's still there, Brenda. Hey, there, Brenda. We're adjourning. Okay, we are. We are adjourning. Okay. All right. Okay. Hi.